Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is another great morning to praise and lift up the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in. We're asking that you would share this video and let us praise and lift up our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's worship him. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Oh, 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 oh let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us let the songs of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise let the songs of the lord rise among us let the songs of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Let the shout of the Lord rise. Let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. We stand in time 
darkness in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three and one, Father, Spirit, and Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, oh great. above all names and he is worthy of all praise and so we ought to worship him and magnify his holy and his wonderful name for God is great and greatly to be praised. Thank God for our wonderful time of worship where we're able to lift up our Lord and our Savior. If you will, turn with me to Philippians, the second chapter, starting at the fifth verse. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse number 5. The Bible reads... Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow 
of things in heaven, of things in earth, and of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let this mind be in you. I want to talk this morning about the Christmas mindset. The Christmas mindset. There is no other name like the name Jesus Christ. The world is made up with many names, some good names and some bad names, some proven names and some not so proven names. But when we really think about the sweet name of Jesus, it's the sweetest name, it's the majestic name, it's the mighty, mightiest name I know. For Jesus Christ had a unique mindset that we need to adopt. It's the Christmas mindset. Not what we can get, but what we can give. And that's why Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Let's look first at the attitude of Jesus Christ, the, the attitude of Jesus Christ. Paul gives the opening statement of declaration. Let this, this mind, this type of mindset, this type of attitude, let this mind be in you. And we can see that same mind in Christ Jesus. The text shows us the mind and the attitude that Jesus had. It's an attitude of sacrifice. It's an attitude of service. The very mindset of Christ is, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in the lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. This is what Christ exemplifies. For Jesus is saying, I, I, I'm not going to put... Uh, I'm, I, I'm going to put on all of humanity. I'm putting all of humanity in front of myself. And this is the attitude. This is the mindset that every Christian must have. It, it's, it's not about me. It, it, it's not all about how I feel. It, it, it's not about what I think. Aren't we glad that Jesus is not selfish? The Christmas mindset is to put others in front of ourselves. That's the mindset. That's the attitude we must have. If Jesus Christ was selfish, how much trouble would humanity be in for Jesus who had no reason to be humble, did. We who have every reason to be humble won't do it. Jesus gives the Christian the very demand, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus is saying, just like I sacrificed, you need to sacrifice who being in the form of God. This teaches us that Jesus was God before he came on this earth as a baby. This is the pre-incarnation of Christ. For Jesus is the second 
person in the Trinity. He's called the God Son. Before time began, Jesus was. Uh, he is the only one that lived before he was born. He's 100% God. He's 100% man at the same time. He, he's 100% human. and He's 100% divine at the same time. The, the son of man became a man to enable men to become sons of God. Being in the form of God. That means that a real God became a real man while still being a real God. Oh, the word form means uh, the outward expression of the inward nature. That means that Jesus Christ came on this earth and wrapped himself in human flesh. God became man while still being God. And we, we see Jesus throughout the New Testament showing us his two natures. For there were times when Jesus got hungry but then there was time when he became, he turned bread into wine. There, there was times when Jesus was thirsty. And then there was times when he was the living water. We see both natures. He's 100% God and he's 100% man at the same time. Being in the form of God. This teaches us that Jesus was human and Jesus also was divine. Jesus Christ is showing us his mindset, not by word, but by action. We have a lot of people who can talk about it, but don't walk it out. Let me explain the incarnation of Jesus Christ this way. There was a wealthy, powerful king who was going along the roadside, seeing this peasant girl in the field working for her father and immediately smitten with love. But because of her low estate and his high office, it became a trickery negotiation. He could have sent his soldiers and forced her to come, but he didn't want to do that. He could have showered her with all kinds of gifts, but he didn't want to do that because he knew you cannot buy true love. But instead, he takes off his royal robe. He puts on ordinary clothes goes into the field, starts working beside her, and strikes up a conversation. Conversation becomes relationship. Relationship becomes love. And love becomes so deep that she was willing to give up her life to be with him. She fell in love with an ordinary man without knowing he was a king. Isn't that what Jesus did for us? He took off his glorious robe, put on the rags of flesh, came down among us just to prove how much he loves us. We fell in love with Jesus who walks with us. We fell in love with Jesus who talks with us. We fell in love with Jesus who tells us we are his own. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Here we see Jesus Christ as God and he's exalted in his exalted position. But we also see him willing to take steps down. We see him willing to humble himself. 
we see him willing to say, not my will, but let your will be done. Thought, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of his status. Jesus didn't have selfish intentions. He had a universal perspective. For Jesus thinks of others and not himself. After all, outlook determines outcome. If the outlook is selfish, the actions will devise and be destructive. Maybe that's why we as humanity has so much trouble because we're always trying to come up instead of come down. Humanity is a difficult garment to put on, but it's tailor-made for humanity. It's the right clothes for the Christian. It's the garment we must wear humility is a mighty good garment for us to put on. For whenever you find yourself having a ego, you need to recognize you are etching God out of the situation. God, get out of God's way and humble yourself. That's the mindset of Christmas. That, that's the attitude that Jesus has for us. He humbles himself. He has a low estate of himself that one day his father would exalt him. Humility is the displa displacement of self by the enthronement of God. That's the attitude of Jesus. But then the admiration of Jesus Christ, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. These next verses show us why we ought to admire Jesus so much. Jesus handicapped himself when he put on a human body. He, he who had all ability became a man with limited ability. He handicapped himself. He continued to take steps down, but made himself of no reputation. That means Jesus Christ emptied himself. He, he forfeited his deity for humanity. He gave up the rights of heaven to come down to dirty earth. The, the Greek New Testament says he nullified and made void all the rights and privileges of deity and came on earth in the weakest form possible, a little bitty baby. Christmas is not about what you can get. Christmas is about what you can Give And we see an uh, example in Jesus when he gave his own life, but made himself of no reputation. I, I admire Jesus because if that, that was our decision and we were making an appearance on earth, can you imagine how we would have arrived? We would have called CNN. We would have needed a press conference. We would have needed Fox News to do a, a all day live coverage. It would have been on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Everyone would be sharing the post. We would have needed special attention and wanted everyone to see what we were doing. That's not 
the Lord we serve. He came as a little bitty baby born in Bethlehem, born outside in the midst of animals on a cold, lonely night. There was no room for him in the Holiday Inn. There was no room for him in the best western. There was no room for him in the most rundown, cheapest of hotels. That's why, that's why we can sing this Christmas away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus, he laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on a hay. We can sing this Christmas our song of joy away in a manger. No crib for a bed. Oh, yes, I admire Jesus because we would have taken being a king seriously and needed a king-sized bed. We would have needed a golden chariot. But Jesus must be admired because he emptied himself. He emptied himself and took up on the form of a servant. Jesus takes it another step down, and he came on earth as a bond servant. When Jesus took upon him the form of a servant, the, the Greek word picture is he's waiting on tables. For Jesus does not think so highly of himself that he can't serve, but his main mission to come down is to serve other people. He who should be served is serving. And no matter how high you think you are, don't ever be so high that you cannot serve somebody else. That doesn't sound like Christmas to the world, but that's Christmas to the Christian. It's not about what you receive. It's about what we sacrificially give. This is the true mindset of Christmas. Jesus gave up the joy of heaven to come down to the dirty dumps uh, called earth and was made in the likeness of man. He had a physical body and even though he's still God he's also has the nature of man I admire Jesus for he was willing to become a man I, I admire Jesus because can't nobody be like the Lord Jesus being fashioned as a man he humbled himself became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. The perfect submission of Jesus took him to death. For Jesus didn't take the top shelf. He took the bottom shelf. He humbled himself. Jesus became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. I admire Jesus because it takes a special somebody to give up his life for the sins of the world. Oh, brothers and sisters, that, that, that's Christmas right there. Uh, you cannot have Christmas without talking about the cross. I'm glad, I'm so glad that Jesus took the humble road and went down. In other words, he came down so we can go up. I admire Jesus because he just keeps on making it happen for us. I, he keeps on doing it. He keeps on doing it for us. He's been holding us together. How in the world do you think we have made it this far? It's the Lord who's been holding us and keeping us together. Why, why do you think you haven't lost your natural mind? 
The Lord has been holding you together. Why, why do you think life circumstances haven't knocked you out? Jesus, yes, sir, has been holding us together. You have been through so much this year, but God has kept you. You, you wanted to throw in the towel, but it was God who's been keeping us. And we're here today with joy on our hearts and praises on our lips because Jesus is holding us together. I admire him because he is holding us together. I don't know how much you admire Jesus, but I really get happy when I talk about the name Jesus uh, because I know it's Jesus who's keeping us together. When, when I think about Jesus and when I think about all that he's done, it is Jesus and his great name that's holding us together. I admire Jesus. God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, it was Christ who died. I admire Jesus because greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend. The hymn knowledge is said God sent his son. They, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. And hallelujah, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived. We have talked about the attitude of Jesus Christ. We've talked about the admiration of Jesus Christ, but I'm closing when we look at the altitude of Jesus Christ. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus Every knee must bow on things in heaven and things in earth, under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. When Jesus humbled himself, his Father exalted him and gave him a name above every name and you can come today and accept Jesus Christ the greatest name of all you can accept him as your Lord and Savior he's above every name he's above anyone you can think about there's only one God and his name is Jesus Christ and today just as you are, you can come to the exalted Christ and you can have the mindset of Christmas. It is sacrificial, the mindset of Christmas. It is a lowly state. It is a state of not my will, but your will be done. Wherefore God highly exalted him, and given him a name that's above every name. But here it is that at the name every knee must bow. There's somebody today you have not bowed to Jesus. But then at that name every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. This morning as you are looking at your life, the question that you need to answer, have you bowed to Jesus and confessed him as Lord? As the musicians come, there might be one who say, I'm, I want to come to the greatest name that is the name of Jesus Christ. I, I want to come to his name and accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. There is no other name like the sweet, like the wonderful, 
name of Jesus. Will you come? Numbers on the screen. Will you call in this morning? Open your heart to Jesus. Let him speak to your soul. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. You have won the victory. Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, for your great love towards us. Thank you, Lord, that death could not hold you down. You came upon this earth, was born in Bethlehem. But then, Lord, you died on Calvary's cross for the sins of the world. Father, we thank you today. We ask that you would minister to the hearts of your people. Bless, O oh God, each right now that they might come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for our time together. And we were able to see Jesus Christ. Now as we share in giving, you said, you love a cheerful giver. And so God bless us to give from our hearts that your name be glorified and praised in all that we do. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank God for our time of worship and our time in the word and now you see on the screen ways to give and so let us give from our hearts let us give that God be glorified and praised in all that we do amen 
Amen and amen. This time we're going to have our benediction. God be with you. May the good Lord be with you. God be with you. Oh, yes. God be with you. Until. Until we meet. Good Lord be with you in your coming and in your going. Be with you until we meet again. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior. Be glory, dominion, power now and forevermore. And all God's children sung together. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you.